Hi guys, so a couple people have requested that I create a disc priest guide video. Um, in the past, I've always avoided making a guide video, mainly because maybe it feels weird for me to talk about the class as if I know a lot about it. I just feel like I've always kind of played whatever by feel. Um, I don't really watch videos or guides. Um, I do read a little bit, but for the most part, I've always kind of just played how I do. And I guess for people to ask me to put all of that into a video feels very official, but I think that's a stupid way to view it. I wrote down some notes, but hopefully I can come up with some other ideas as I'm talking through. So one of the first things I definitely want to mention, and this is actually number one that I want to mention because I feel like there are still so many players in this game that don't know how to dispel debuffs. And that is actually something that annoys me, drives me crazy. Dispelling has been in the game since 2004, whenever Classic came out. And for some reason, 17 years later, people still don't realize how valuable the spelling is. So I've been in plenty of groups with a healer or even DPS that don't use their dispel. And for me personally, I would never group with someone that deals high DPS or is decent at healing if they don't use the spells because there are actually a fair amount of the spells in these dungeons and one global one cast can negate so much damage or it can really um minimize the difficulty of something you're experiencing and i mentioned the second part because i just quickly thought about some of the um debuffs that show up in these dungeons and i will say that off the top of my head a lot of them as magic debuffs, a lot of them are dots, but they tick for a lot, a lot of damage. Dots or diseases, I'm talking from a Disc Priest perspective, of course, but there are also other debuffs like curses that show up. So in Theater of Pain, there is a curse debuff that occurs on the platforms on your way to whatever the fuck his name is, Coltharok that drops swirlies on the ground every few seconds. This is a very long lasting debuff. I'm pretty sure it's over 15 seconds long. And these platforms are not very big. So if you have somebody, usually it can be two people having the debuff up at the same time if people are not dispelling immediately. So if two people are dropping swirlies on the ground, it really reduces where you can stand. So if you stand in the swirly, it fears you. And if you're getting feared, you also have a chance of getting knocked off by death winds. Um, another curse debuff is in Halls of Atonement in the first large area. One of them, I don't know the curse name. I'm not really good at names. I would know stuff like that better if I played DPS. That's actually something that I noticed as a healer. I don't understand mobs as well as i used to when i played shadow because when you're dps you need to know cast names and what they do but as a healer i focus on the health frames and the spelling so i know that when a debuff is on somebody i'm dispelling that off immediately but sometimes i won't know what it's actually called but anyways in halls of atonement there is a curse that after it expires it deals a lot of damage around the person and on fortified it can just potentially kill that person if they're not topped off. So that damage and that danger can be negated with one global. And there are so many people that still do not decurse or don't know how to remove it. And I just feel like I would rather play with a smart player that knows why dispelling is important and actually uses a spell than somebody who only focuses on their fucking numbers and damage done. So I have several examples of where dispels will be predictable. So that's another thing. Most magic dispels in the game that I can think of do have a cast time or they can generally be anticipated. So for certain bosses, 
there's always a period of time before they're being applied. And then you can kind of anticipate when they're going to come out. So a good example of that is Coltharoc. So it's called a phantasmal parasite. And on tyrannical weeks, or just in general, I would say even on fortified weeks, if you're doing a higher key, this deals a lot of damage. So you want to dispel it off. So as a priest, I always mass dispel anytime there are two or more people with a magic debuff on them. So for this boss, I would say mass dispel can be used for every other phantasmal parasite. So when you're doing this boss, the first one goes out a couple seconds after you pull the boss. And I always try to tell the DPS in my group to please stand on like the same side of the platform. Because if people are standing at opposite ends of the platform and I'm trying to mass dispel, then I'm not going to reach them. And that's just pointless. There is actually very little reason to spread out in that place. The only thing that drops on the ground are the hand grabby things and they don't take up a lot of space. So just standing in the same area makes mass dispelling so easy because there are times where I would rather not actually need to look at positioning. I want to just be able to press mass dispel, kind of put myself in the border of where I'm dispelling and just assume that I'm going to get two people. Let's try to stay on the same side of the map so MD is easier. This shit hits me fucking hard out. Holy shit. 10k blast. What the? Why did he fucking smack me? What? Wait, wait, no, 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 no. I'm not gonna use it. I don't want to waste I, one. Okay. You have to click the client on it. Yep, I did. Having mass spell is amazing. I love having it because anytime I see two people with a magic debuff out in my group and I cast the mass spell, I just feel like immediately so much pressure has been lifted. Aside from instant casts like that one, there are a lot of bosses and mobs that cast something that you can anticipate it. So for example, in the other side, when you're doing the hallway leading up to Hakar with all the trolls, the Hoodoo Hexer casts Hex. I always put him on focus. I also tell my DPS and tank if we're all in Discord or I'll type it in chat and if they don't listen to me, whatever, I don't care. But I do want to emphasize that you don't need to interrupt Hex. I would rather you use your interrupts on damaging abilities because Hex is something I can always remove, no matter what. If it's casted on me, you shadow word death when the cast is about to end. It'll break you out. If it's casted on somebody else, 
you watch the bar and the moment it ends, you dispel the person. So they're literally hexed for a fraction of a second. Oh god. I got that, you motherfucker. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> Can I eat a buff? It does Oh, 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 shit. Wait, wait. <laughs> no, the ghost was out and he was like running towards me. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he almost smacked me with his ghostly yeah. hand. Um, no, I wouldn't say it's instant, but I think he hits pretty hard. But there are so many examples where you can anticipate a dispel. Another one is in Plaguefall, um, Dr. Akis. <clears throat> he casts Slime Injection. There are times where I've seen healers leave this debuff up on the tank, and I don't understand why, because it deals a lot of damage, and that's damage that can be removed in one fucking global. Man, these bosses take a long time. Plus yep. of dispel speed there. Oh, I set him to focus. <laughs> so in general, what I'm just trying to say is um, learn the mobs, learn the bosses, and after you're familiar with who casts what, um, once you set them to focus, you will always be able to dispel things immediately. And I will say that in a lot of scenarios, it's always best to dispel as soon as possible because the sooner you dispel, the next time a cast manages to go out, then your cooldown is going to be off or close to coming off cooldown. But if you dispel maybe four seconds into the debuff, then some damage was already done. And then I feel like by the time you dispel it, another cast has already been going out. I just feel like the sooner you dispel, the sooner you can keep um, staying on top of that cycle of debuffs being applied to your group. Disc Priest is definitely a, one of the classes where you need to understand everything as best as possible in order to better anticipate. So actually, something I literally just learned two days ago is the boss in the other side, Hakar. So normally when we do this boss, I just kind of party with people hoping that they do high DPS and I just try to heal through it before they kill us with the AoE damage. But I did not realize that you can reduce his blood barrier absorb by taking less damage. And as a disc priest, that's very, very good because we have rapture. So in one of the runs that I did recently, um... I asked my party members to tell me when Blood Barrier is about to come up because I don't use DBM. And I covered the whole party in Barrier and his Blood Barrier ended up being very small. So being able to know mechanics like that is very, very important in being able to stay on top of things because Disc, for the most part, generally needs to be played proactive, I would say. Definitely, there are still plenty of times where I play reactive because I don't want to babysit the tank the whole time in the sense that I don't want to be holding globals just to make sure I've started a cast when he takes a hit. You still want to make sure that you're um, using DPS in between for some atone heals. So something that I like to do is sometimes when DPS get hit by something, if I know the um, scenario or the packs that we're fighting, boss, whatever, and I know that there is no upcoming damage that is unavoidable, <laughs> then I will try to use atonement to heal them up as much as possible. I'd say in the hierarchies, I'll probably try to mend them over 50%, but then for the rest of that, I want to try to use purge or my DPS spells to heal them because if you spam Shadow Mend all the time, you are going to go oom um so quickly. So you have to be careful about that. 
Although at the same time, at hierarchies, I have learned that you're literally spamming Shadowmend all the fucking time and it sucks. But just still, you need to use your best judgment and figure out like, can I afford to not top this person off right now? Sometimes, obviously you can't. I was doing Spires of Ascension yesterday. Um, and on the third boss, he casts Purifying Blast on people. And that is something that inflicts initial damage, and then it's a pretty heavy dot on Tyrannical. So that is actually a really good example of what I'm talking about because, so when he's casting on somebody, I definitely want to make sure that they are above 50%. And if they're not, then I need to make sure that I have a Rapture on them. Otherwise, they'll be close to dying or they will die. So that's a situation where if he targets somebody, I want to make sure whoever he's targeting gets a strong heal or a direct heal like Penance and Shadow Mend right away instead of just trying to use Atonement. But on the other side, once the dot is about to fall off, then for that person, even if they're not topped off, I will toss a shield onto them, just making sure that they have some sort of Atonement. And then I will try to let Purge heal them up or just my random DPS that I'm able to throw in. I'll just close this. Okay. I wonder if you can shadow meld that too. Oh yeah, you probably can. Yeah, I haven't tried it before because I usually just like cloak it or something, but I guess I should actually try that. So I know that some people will probably think about the times where they're healing a tank and they feel like they can't do anything but spam shadow mend on them. And I'll say that I have definitely had times like that before as well. Um, in those situations, honestly, I don't understand tanking very well or I don't know other classes very well to, um, to be familiar with how they could be using their cooldowns or maybe they're not using them correctly. But there are some tanks where I have to spam Shadow Mend on them and it's miserable. When it comes to tanks like that, it's very difficult to play your class to the fullest because you're not able to actually take advantage of your class. You can't actually DPS heal or atone heal much at all if they're getting chunked so hard that all you have to do is spam mend on them. So if you come across tanks like that, um, there's not much you can do because it's probably their play style and in that case, they are probably better suited partying up with a different healer of another class, perhaps. Um, anytime I've come across tanks that get chunked like that or where I feel like I can't use a global on anything else but direct heals on him, I try to avoid doing consistent runs or keys or continuing to party up with them because it just it doesn't make sense, right? I am unable to play the way that disc should be played, and in that case... It's just not a good fit.
Another quick tidbit that I wanted to mention that is something that can be um, taking advantage of utility more is Leap of Faith. So Leap of Faith is definitely um, a fun spell. I always like to use it, but I actually feel like players having that awareness to properly Leap of Faith people to keep them from dying, that is a pretty big game changer because I've been on the receiving end of that myself. And whenever that happens, I'm just super grateful, of course. So there's a couple of places where um, Leap of Faith will definitely matter. So one of them is the boss in Theater of Pain, Zav. So sometimes if people are kind of positioned badly during one of his half platform splitting chops, I don't remember what it's called. Okay. So sometimes people might just be standing in a bad place when it comes to massive cleave. And depending on what their class is, they might not have a way to quickly get out of it in time. Plus, there may be times where um, the banner was left up for a little bit too long and they're still a little bit slowed. So when it comes to stuff like that, if you can be aware of who might be lagging behind, casting Leap of Faith on them is always a really, really good choice to make. Other places include... Um, on the way to Kothrak, like I mentioned, the death winds, there's always people that get knocked off by that. So watch for that and save them if you can. Um, another good one is the eruption in the other side cast by the death speaker on one of the main platforms before you go into the individual sides. Um, it's just that large purple conal that he casts and People can get hit by that sometimes, and if they do, it's usually a pretty big knockback, so they'll get knocked off and die. So if you see that, if they don't die from the damage, save them. And the other one that I can think of is on the way to the last boss in Mists, um, those green swirlies on the ground, they explode for a lot of damage, and then they knock people back. People will fall off and die, so save them from that. So Boon is something I am definitely still getting a better hang of. Right now, I feel like most of the times that I use it, I'm using it on Prideful, which is actually super, super helpful. I really like using it on Prideful right now. Um, maybe it's not that great for a damage boost because the AoE damage from that can be really great on certain packs, but I've been varying between using it on packs and using it on Prideful because Prideful damage, um, it can be overwhelming sometimes, and I really don't like getting to the point where you have to individually mend people. You're just barely staying alive at the end of it. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. perfect. How did that hit me? I try to avoid using too many cooldowns on him because usually he is spawned right before bosses and it really, really, really sucks having no healing cooldowns and then your DPS are holding all their cooldowns so the pride dies slowly. But Boon has been working out so well for that because Ascended Blast is a really strong single target spell. Naturally, Ascended Blast already heals one person on use, but then you get additional atonement healing for everybody else. The main annoyance, I suppose, when it comes to Boon is I either have to use two Radiances to make sure that people have atonement during the entire duration, like I will cast Radiance just before I use Boon, and then just before Boon is about to end, I need to Radiance again because it's about to fall off. Or I could try to individually Power Word Shield everybody, but I don't know, I haven't really tried that much. Because I tried to save Boon for the latter half of the pride. Like, I don't want to use it at the very start, right? Because that's not when healing is rough. I try to use it at the end. But I'm still playing around with it. Um, the fact that it does give you movement speed, I want to try to use it for more movement times in boss fights. So actually, third boss, 
in Sanguine, the times where all the swirlies spawn on the ground and you have to dodge them, that's a really good time to use the spell for sure because you get movement speed and then you get to cast the blast during in between your casts and it will heal people because during that time there's a dot going off as well. Another thing I would like to recommend is to get used to using your defensives instinctively or your cooldowns basically. So for me, I feel like I use Desperate Prayer anytime I take a large chunk of damage at a time. It's a pretty short cooldown. It's only a minute and a half. So I like to use it very frequently. Sometimes when I die without using it, it pisses me off because I want it to be such a um, natural reaction for me to take damage and I'll instantly press Desperate Prayer. But another thing also, if people are interested in pushing higher keys or just like trying to play better um, is using potions, right? So spiritual healing potion is, it's fantastic. So there's definitely times, oh, this is another good thing to talk about where say for example, on prideful or any boss where multiple people need heals. And if you want to reserve um, your casts, for somebody else, you can always rely on using Desperate Prayer or Healing Potion to take care of yourself. So for example, last boss in Plaguefall, the Infectious Rain, that is difficult to heal through. And I'll admit, even I struggle through it sometimes. I feel like I haven't had enough good practice on that boss to feel very, very confident in keeping everybody alive because I don't anticipate it. I, I, well, I don't have DBM, so I can't anticipate it. So when it comes, I'm just like, oh shit. Maybe that's like the one boss where I actually might want DBM if it will tell you when it's about to cast. So for that cast, multiple people in the party are taking a lot of damage and they're getting low. Even though for that specific instance, I can dispel disease. Usually I dispel at three stacks and then the last one stack really shouldn't kill me if I was topped off beforehand. Say that we're both really low and I'm like at 20%, so so is my party member, I would just spam mend on them and then use healing potion on myself. There will be times where you need to prioritize somebody else to keep everybody alive. And if you have stuff available to you, like file, if you're a Kyrian or a healing potion, or if you have desperate prayer that you can use on yourself, then you can afford to dedicate your cast to somebody else while keeping yourself alive. Also, if you are having mana issues, um, then I would recommend you avoid casting Mind Blast unless you need it for AoE healing because it's actually a fairly expensive cast, 1250, whereas Smite is like 400. Oh, it's 200, holy shit, so cheap. Yeah, so Smite is basically, you regen that mana while you're casting it. It's basically free. Mind Blast is very expensive, so definitely on certain boss fights where I am a little bit more nervous about running out of mana towards the end of the fight, I will avoid casting Mind Blast unless I need it for AoE healing. Another little tip is Psychic Scream. So for the most part, we don't want to be standing in melee range because there will be some mobs that cleave or some sort of like conal high damage ability that could one-shot you. Some of those exist in Spires of Ascension. It's an AoE interrupt, basically. So the slimes right before the millstorms in the other side, I like to fear those because usually two are casting at the same time. So if you interrupt it with a fear, that's really good. Yeah, just in general, I want to try to use fear on um, most packs because it's... It's just a good interrupter, I feel like, especially for any group that is casting multiple at the same time. So the Dragon Hawks in Spires of Ascension, sometimes there's like packs of five, I think, or maybe there's only one pack of five in the entire dungeon that you come across. For those, fear is extra good for that too, because sometimes four or five of them are casting at the same time. So it's literally like an AoE interrupt. Lately, there are a couple dungeons that people want you to mind soothe. They are Necrotic Wake, Mists, and Spires of Ascension too sometimes.
Patrice, uh, can you just do that? Yep. Thank you. Just something to be aware of because I would say there are plenty of people in this game who do keys with people and expect other people to be mind readers. And yeah, sometimes people won't know these things because they don't run the keys all the time and whatnot. So um, that's just a tip for you for Mythic Plus. Mind Soothe is used a couple times. Um, another tidbit, because I really, really like to use my entire kit. Um, for some undead that can't be feared for interrupting casts, you could shackle them. So I think the only example I have of this is in um, Theater of Pain. When you're on the way to Gorchop, there are those jumping guys that cast like Withering Discharge or something. That's a large AoE damage done to the group. So if you don't have interrupts available for it, you could always shackle the mob to interrupt the cast. And uh, yeah, that's just super useful. And another type of utility that you can do. For barrier, I would say that one has been a little bit difficult to use. But I think that's also because I tend to think in a very efficient way. So sometimes if I'm using barrier just for the tank on trash, then I feel a little weird about it. Um, but actually that's kind of stupid to say because usually when I use barrier, I will always intentionally stand in it no matter what. There's been a couple times where I would do runs with DPS that are two steps away from the barrier and they don't move into it. That definitely drives me crazy because it can really help out your healer sometimes when you move into the barrier. All right, well, that's good. There is a way for me to show overflow. That's going to be so... What I'm trying to say is that it is super useful to show absorbs with your unit frames because something that I was doing at first that was pretty wasteful in my opinion is I would just use barrier. I would just use rapture when the tank was taking a lot of damage and nobody else. And I would just spam power word shield on him. But I feel like it would be better for you to see the absorbs and only refresh the power word shield when most of the shield is gone instead of just spamming it because it could be a waste of mana. And I just feel like whenever I'm doing hierarchies now, I'm trying to be more careful about my mana because there's not a lot of time to drink. And um, yeah, I just don't want it to be low on mana going into a pack that leads into prideful or any of that. So yeah, it's really hard. I feel like it's difficult to say exactly like how to play this. So that's why I'd rather just give you some tips like this and advice. Um, everybody has their own play style for sure. Um, so I would say you should never lose your own play style. You should just, uh, focus more on improving certain aspects that tend to escape you more often and definitely try to work on your reactions to things. So I do think that sometimes if I'm really, really on top of things, it's usually because my reactions are fast. So sometimes if a tank randomly gets chunked really really hard and i have rapture off cooldown there are times where i react appropriately and there are times where i'm slower to react because sometimes if it's really unexpected i'd be like holy shit let me start casting this shadow bend and sometimes during that cast it's too late and they'll die whereas if you see that chunk and you know rapture is off cooldown and you immediately cast rapture before you starting a mend then that could be the main difference so Stuff like that always becomes more um, muscle memory for you through practice. So you could watch this video and you could remember my tips, but it's not going to matter if you don't actively try to um, apply them to your play. I actually recently went Night Elf, and sometimes I'm not really sure if I like it. I mainly did it because it felt like there were not as many stuns in these dungeons as before. But the funny thing is right after I did that, I was doing a theater of pain and I got stunned by that one mob that channels on you. 
and nobody was interrupting it on me and the tank died because I couldn't heal him. So times like that, I definitely, definitely miss being human. But I feel like the main thing that I need to still get used to, I'm definitely not shadow molding much at all. The only time that I'm remembering to use it is if we're dying on trash and I can attempt to meld and then mass res everybody instead of wasting time running back. But for bosses, I definitely want to get used to melding casts more because right now I'm not doing it at all. So yeah, that's probably it for now. If you still have questions though, don't be afraid to ask them. I'm always happy to answer. And if there's anything more specific, I guess, that you want to know, feel free to ask. And if necessary, I can definitely make that into a video. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.